Hi, and welcome to One Mighty Little Event. Hey, my name is Eric, and uh, in this video we're going to look at how, if we subscribe to an event in the base app, we can actually do stuff that used to take base app customization, uh, but we can do it just on a single event. So let's start by looking at um, the issue the issue uh, here is my visual studio no it is not my visual studio i'm so used to say it's my visual studio code here is business central and this is a fresh version 17 and um, let me know let me show you what i'm talking about so if i create a new invoice and um I add a GL line to my invoice here. Grab a GL count, um, and I do quantity one, and let's say $99. I do one line more. You know the trick, F8 will copy the value from the row, row above. Um, one, and let's just do $88 here. So here's a nice invoice, two GL account lines. Press F9 to post. Yes, I want to post. Do you want to open? Yes, I would very much like to open. So now we have a posted sales invoice with two lines. So let's look at what's actually been posted. Um, and since this is fresh and something, I can also show you another little thing that, you know, we used to have three menu options called navigate uh, we used to have something over here called navigate that's gone it's now called related which is pretty nice we also used to have if something were were um, promoted as navigation it would be navigate so it's still navigate but then we also used to have a navigate action somewhere in here also a and I, I have no idea where to find it. It's probably on the invoice here. No, it may only be promoted. But that the navigate action, the one to look for the whatever has been created from the entity or whatever is related to the entity, is called find entries now. So we went from three navigate to one and uh, find entries. The old function called navigate is now called find entries. Anyway, so we have a post sales invoice. We know that because that's where we came from. And we have four GL entries. And if we look at this, we remember we made two entries, one for $99 and one for $88. But clearly they are not here. So we have one line for $187. So the two lines, because they hit the same account and there were no difference in uh, dimensions and posting groups and anything, they, they were basically the same. They got aggregated into the same deal entry. This is actually a very, very old feature that goes way, way back to the very first version of, uh, of Navision, because I, th I think that the, the original reason for this was that you didn't want to make too many GL entries because they took up space and so on. So it was, it was proper to aggregate entries together that were basically the same, so they didn't contain more information but let's say that for some reason you want to enrich uh, the, the sales line and you want that information to to go to the gl entry or, or something else so you want to preserve that also in the gl entries um, and and that's if, if you ask any old nav developer that's the customization that they have done lots of lots of times um but always basically by going into code unit 80 or something else to uh, modify 
by modifying the, the base app, but now we can't modify the base app. Oh, we should should not modify the base app, but we can't. Let, let's just uh, stick with that. That's the easiest explanation. So how do we accomplish to get these two lines that are equal to actually be two lines when posted? Uh, and one thing that I often, you know, when I'm talking with people who are new to uh, the business central world, what, 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 what's important to learn? And, and I think one of the things that's very, very important to learn is actually the, the base construct on how the app is working. You know, actually sit down and read through code unit 80, code unit 90, code unit 12, and so on. So you get a, a understanding of how data flows. If you have that understanding, you would know that, let's go. So here is Visual Studio Code. I told you, it will be there. So if you know the base bit, you will uh, let's go into it. Let's actually just do it like this to begin with. You would know that one of the, uh, we, we have a table in here. Like this is almost like the original temporary table. Um, the invoice posting buffer. Uh, and and what is, what's the purpose of this? This is, but let's, let's see what, in this one, let's see if we can get the, the code for it. So the purpose of this uh, table, and, and, and I guess even though this is version 17, this could be marked as one of the new fancy virtual tables, uh, data type equal virtual, because that's the way this table is used. But if we scroll down and find, there's tons of fields in here. Um, scroll down and find the primary key I uh, can't remember if I'm allowed to, but this is, this is read only. So you can see the primary key here is a, is a monster. It says GL account, general business posting group, general product posting group, VAT business posting group, VAT product posting group, tax area code, tax group code, tax label, use tax, dimension set ID, job number, fixed asset line number, default code, additional grouping identifier. So a bunch of fields. And the idea is that when code unit 80 is posting an invoice. It's not creating general journal entries as on, on a ad hoc basis. It's filling up this buffer, a temporary buffer, and it's filling up by uniqueness of the primary key. So if there's already a value in this table that fits all the primary key, the Instead of adding a new record, it will just update the amount. Um, if it finds a, a new combination of all these fields, it will insert a new record in the table. So at the end, you have an aggregated view of um, the different combinations of postings. There are a new document and the amounts of them. So at the end, it will, Continuity 80 will run through this temporary table and create a general journal of that. Um, and the interesting thing here, when looking at it, say, okay, then maybe if I do something with uh, one of these fields, I might be able to trick Continuity 80, 80 into create more lines. Because if we get more lines into this buffer table, we'll get more entries down in the general journal. Um, and the the shop I will look at the last field and say, what is additional grouping identifier? Well, we can try to search for it and we can see that it's a code 20, field number 1000. And it doesn't really say anything. So what we can do is see here, I got the base app as a, as an app. So here, here is the entire base app. Um, 
And don't mind the, all the squiggly lines. That's probably because we're missing some, some objects. That doesn't really matter. But what we can do now. So I got, by the way, so I got this folder uh, when I created my, uh, my BC container by using the uh, include AL parameter on uh, the nav uh, or BC container helper function to create a new uh, container. Um, but I can, let's search for this. And it's already, in. and what we can see here is that this field is created and added to primary key, but nowhere in the base app or anything is this field used. So it's just sitting there and waiting for somebody to use it. So let's do that. Let's use it because clearly if we can add a value to this field, then we are forcing everything to go into uh, its own line in the buffer and thereby we are forcing code unit 80 to post everything to the GL. Um, so we, I have a empty, empty app here and um, let's add a file. So new file, we will uh, fix posting.al and it has to be a code unit. And let's give it a number. I don't care. Yeah, I do. No, I really don't care. 29, that's a good number. Um, make sure post all is posted. That's a great name for a code unit. If I can type it, there we go. Um, so, so one thing we didn't, let's, let's go back for a second here and, and look at this because one thing we did not figure out is what do we have in this table? Um, and we can see that prepare sales. So there is a function that will take the sales line and grab all the, all the fields. Um, And then there's an event called on after invoice posting buffer prepare sales. So this is when we're filling out the, um, the buffer record from a sales line. So this is exactly what we need to do something about. Um, so let's actually subscribe to this event. Let's try that. Um, so we will grab the, event subscriber here and this was on a table right and the the so so here here's a strange question not strange question but but something that's not real so we have object type table so if object type was code unit we could address it by code unit colon colon and if it was page we could do page colon colon but if it's a table it's database colon colon and the table was called invoice post buffer and the event was called on after invoice post buffer prepare sales so uh, all I, already at this point we can see how to also handle this issue from a purchase document because there's another event but we'll just keep sales here um, there's no field name, skip on misses, missing license, we'll do that. Skip on missing permissions, we'll do that. So, and when, when we're creating, so, so the, the, the snippet will just give us an empty procedure, which is a problem because where's the sales line? There's nothing here. So we need to tell the snippet what parameters uh, we need in this event subscriber. And we can see that there are basically two. Um, we get the invoice, invoice post buffer and we can get the sales line. Um, notice that when, when you're subscribing to an event, it doesn't really matter. I could do sales line first and invoice post buffer after and everything is still fine. Um, 
So now we have our invoice post buffer. And let's go back to this one for a second. So remember the the little field. Let's find what it was what it was called. One thousand, the additional grouping identifier. So what we want to do is basically tell that this we we need to put a value into this field, and to make sure that we are unique for each line. And the easiest way to do this is basically just to say format and then from the sales line whoa sales line we will grab the line number and put that nicely in there so now and we remember this was this was 20 characters so no we can't format a integer to be more than 20 characters so now we're telling that each buffer line, if it comes from a sales line with a line number, it needs to be unique. Just by telling that the additional grouping identifier is just the line number. So in reality, even though I have eight lines of code now, uh, this is kind of a one-liner. So a pretty powerful little event. So let's compile and see what happens. And funny enough, it's pretty fast to compile an entire, entire extension with only one line of code. Okay, I need to log in. And while we're waiting for this, if you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, subscribe and and let me know in the comments if you like videos like this where I focus on a on a specific little function or you want the 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 hacker stuff or you're more into into the teaching stuff. Um, comments below. That's where it at. Um, so let's create a new sales invoice. So we'll try to do the exact same thing as we did before. I'll take a GL account, and I think I did 43, 100, quantity one, 99. I go back, I use F8 to copy that, I do one, and then I do 88. I think that was exactly what I did, and I pressed F9 to post. Yes, this is posted, you want to open the posted invoice. So, moment of truth, we'll find the find entries function, and the, the, the sharp-eyed viewers would see that we now have five GL entries instead of four as before. So you can see the, the difference here is that those two lines, even though are the, they are the same from a code perspective, uh, they are now separated in the GL. So if we added our own fields that we needed to be carried into the GL, uh, and prevent stuff like this, this will do it. Um, let's just go back and see the previous, uh, let's do posted sales invoices and find this one and do the find entries again. So you, in this case, we have only four because it was aggregated to a minus 187. Uh, but the next one with our one liner in it, it's now separated. So we have changed standard behavior of the posting routine without making crazy changes into the base app and, and going down that rabbit hole at all. We just subscribed to a single event. We wrote a single line of code and then we changed the posting behavior of Business Central. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. If you like stuff like that, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, have a wonderful day.